Joining me on the line is UNRWA spokesperson, Mr. Christopher Gunnis in Jerusalem. Mr. Gunnis, can you hear me? I can. It's a pleasure to be on your program. Pleasure is ours to have you here. We are entering a third day of ceasefire in Gaza. How is the situation on the ground? The situation is relatively calmer, and I use the word relatively in its full sense, because for the last month, two million largely defenseless people have been frankly subjected to the most dehumanizing bombardment. Um, they were ordered out of their homes, many of them by the Israeli army. They had to walk through a battlefield. They found themselves in UN compounds. Some of those were hit. Some people, children were killed by that same army in that compound. Now that they're now returning to their homes and finding that that same army seems in many cases to have destroyed their homes. So there's been a an industrial scale denial of human dignity. And I'm glad to say that relatively speaking, the third day of the ceasefire has brought some relative calm to the people of Gaza. How much aid has been reaching the refugees so far? Is it, is it substantial? Well, you know, when you say how much aid, you know, a fair amount but when you've got between three and four thousand people living in a building which was designed to be a school for a thousand kids coming in the morning and leaving in the afternoon and when you've got uh, three to four thousand people living there 24 7 in the situation i.e of conflict going on around them you can imagine nothing is enough we have and i say we as the international community including the un we have all let the people of gaza down in a manner which i consider to be utterly shameful and so you know talking now about a bit of aid here a bit of aid there i think is only part of the story we should be talking about justice and accountability and that's why unra has made a call as have others for an inquiry into what happened. The Human Rights Council has got a, um, a commission of inquiry which is coming to the region, because for us, this is not just about some jurisprudential concept. For us, this is about human dignity, and human beings deserve and must have dignity even in death. And we must restore the dignity to the people who died by at least allowing their loved ones the truth of what happened. So. We must find out the truth behind every single one of these statistics, because behind every one of them is a humanity and a dignity and a destiny that needs respecting. Mr. Gunnis, the UN has condemned the series of recent attacks on its schools in Gaza, but amongst other excuses, Israel claims UNRWA has discovered rocket caches of unknown provenance in its school. And I'm quoting here the Washington Post. Can you confirm this? We have been very proactive and transparent on three occasions when we found caches of weapons in schools, in UNRWA schools that had been mothballed and closed down for the summer. So they're not being used. They weren't these shelters that were being used to house people. And it was in regular inspections by our staff that we found these weapons. We immediately condemned them. I made public statements condemning the groups who did this. It was a flagrant violation of our neutrality and clearly endangered our staff and civilians. And goodness knows they've been endangered quite enough already. We've lost 11 staff members. So the idea that because weapons are found and declared by a neutral UN organization in one part of the Gaza Strip, that that can somehow be used as a justification for direct hits on clearly marked UN schools notified to the Israeli army in other parts of the Gaza Strip is frankly to laugh at international law and the responsibilities of belligerent parties and their, and their protection responsibilities towards civilians during times of war. So you're saying Israel's shells are not justified? Am I it's not just right? me saying it, the Secretary General said it. The American State Department issued a very strongly worded statement calling this a disgraceful act, saying it was appalled. And if you look at the State Department statement, it also says that the suspicion of militants being nearby does not justify an attack endangering thousands of civilians. You recently tweeted a sustainable ceasefire requires the end of the blockade of Gaza. Are you hopeful this will be achieved? I mean, it breaks my heart. I, I, I can't believe it can go on. I mean, these people in Gaza, they were blockaded before, then they've been bombarded. Many of them have been made homeless. Many were killed or multiple were killed. There were multiple deaths in UN um, premises. They've now gone home to find themselves, you know, without a house to live in. I can't believe that we're all going to stand idly by and watch this crippling blockade deny them their dignity and their humanity 
it seems to me that after Gaza 2014, something really has changed. Um, you know, perhaps it was my crying on television, which unlocked a certain international indignation. Um, but sir, and whether that's true or not, I don't know. But I certainly think that this time round, there is a profound, visceral sense that what was there before cannot go on and that people, you know, simply can't be subjected to this level of indignity for any longer. Are you optimistic about the ongoing negotiations in Cairo? Look, we don't have a seat at that table. We are humanitarians. And frankly, we mop up and mitigate the political failures, not just, you know, in places like Cairo, but in the peace process itself. And of course, given that we're in that position, we earnestly hope and pray that those talks in Cairo to su succeed, because goodness knows only that the people of Gaza, those civilians, have suffered the indignities and the denial of their humanity for far too long already. You are still there despite the heavy criticism you've been facing from Israel for standing with those Palestinians. As a UN member, what is driving you to stand up so strong for those refugees? Well, look, it's not just me. I mean, we have 13,000 staff in Gaza who are working alongside these desperate, traumatized, dispossessed, and many of them now homeless people. And I think what motivates all of us is a profound sense of justice and of a humanitarian mission. I mean, how can you possibly allow these people who are so disadvantaged to carry on? We have to do something. There's no, there's a moral and there's a humanitarian imperative and we will continue. That's what motivates us. Well, hoping we finally get peace in Palestine. That was Honor West spokesperson, Mr. Christopher Gunnis in Jerusalem. Thank you so much for being with us today. Not a bit. It's my pleasure. Anytime.